on screen for you guys. It's been quite a while. It's been quite a while. It's a huge interval actually and because of a lot of unavoidable circumstances. And I want to give a big shout out to all the supporters out there through my DMs, to my casual discussions. I was like, when will we start the show? When will we start the show? And when will you start the show? You know, some of them were asking and I was like, okay. It's time to start the show and we are here now. So hope you enjoy. Today we have a special guest. It's none other than Yan, who's the owner of a very uh, proud establishment that is Pro Cyclist. I think you should introduce yourself, Yan. Can you say a bit about yourself and introduce yourself? Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, my name is Yan Kupal Um Hello. I yeah, I run <laughs> I run Pro Cycling Shalom, yeah. Get Active Pro Cycling. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we started this in 2016. There's mm -hmm. four of us, um, not the sole owner, but we have, you know, multiple three, yeah, my partnership. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I I ride bicycles. I basically break bicycles. I repair them. I sell them. I ride them. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. It's great, cool man. I mean, like you having an establishment that has always been one of the things that's really out of the box kind of thing. I felt like you have really uh, brought a huge change. You know? Yeah, in a way, because uh, it wasn't, uh, I mean, when we first started, we never had such a thought of starting something out of the box. Mm -hmm. It was out of sheer necessi like necessity because um, when we owned like the the bikes we had in, back in the day, yeah, yeah. it was such a pain to get mm -hmm. them repaired, to get them, to get the spares. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a few of us and we would really struggle. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it just, it just settled in my mind like, Maybe I should just start a bike shop to make sure, things easier, yeah, yeah. if not for myself, but for others mm -hmm. also. So that's how the whole idea sparked. And uh, luckily I had, I spilled this idea onto my, the, the, the partners now yeah. and they were ready to back me up. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, we got started and just, just went on from there. Yeah. I think some things that <clears throat> I feel like before we talk about your establishment and the business career you have taken and you're such a young guy, you know. Why don't you explain a bit where exactly you are from and how, how was your early life, man, growing up? So, um, I grew up in Upper Shillong in Laimer. Oh. Yeah, oh, so nice place, nice place. we, I have uh, two sisters and a younger brother. Okay. My mom, my dad, my grandma. So you're the middle child, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, middle child. <laughs> yeah. The less, the now I know. Oh, now, yeah. <laughs> That's how it works. So, um, yeah, I, 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 we grew up in, um, I won't say such a strict family, but then yeah, I, I, we were sort of always separated from 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 the neighbors, and uh, you know, like uh, when we were, I, as as I like, I think everyone goes through this where when you grow up, you want to try out things. Like everyone wants to, everybody wants to be a footballer, everyone wants to be a cricket player. So I've literally, I've I, I really man, I've tried yeah. everything. I've tried football, I've tried cricket, <laughs> I've tried playing the guitar. Yeah, yeah, and I sucked at all of them. <laughs> None of it worked. But uh, what I didn't realize, which I do realize now, is that all this while, I mean, during that time while I was doing all that, behind, like, I, after, like, you know, my free time, I would always ride my bicycle, mm -hmm. which I never paid attention to. Yeah. And that has sort of become the thing now, you know? I mean, okay. didn't realize back then, but then, yeah. It is something that I think came into you, right? Yeah, so a very, a very interesting uh, instance is like uh so basically we had a bicycle which my dad bought for my sister mm -hmm. and uh i would never get to ride that and <laughs> <laughs> you know the other sisters were always like like they like boss me and yeah. they, like, they'll just ride it and then i'll be staring at them like give me a chance they're, like they'll just go and lock it up and I'm like oh man so this one fine day when i had a chance to mm -hmm. um I, I, I promise you, I never touched the bicycle before. Yeah, yeah. And then I think they were not home that day. I just somehow found the keys. I don't know what I did. But I got the bicycle and I just literally just sat on it. Mm -hmm. And my first stroke of a pedal and I just balanced and I just went. Oh, I God. didn't, nobody helped me. There were no training wheels. <laughs> okay, okay. I just went straight forward and like balanced myself. And like, it was then, yes, yeah, so I, I fell down and uh -huh. I just kept trying, you know. So that was something really interesting where like, yeah, I... I Maybe I was so keen on learning or I don't know what was yeah. it. But I just learned just like that, you know, like on first try. Yeah, I think something. that is something that's amazing. Man. Yeah. Like you trying out everything. That's the first thing. I want to know why <laughs> you, you try. Okay, you tried football. Like how how did you got influenced by football? I think no, football is, if you grow up in here in Megalaya, especially Upper Shalom, I mean my cousins. I have my friends. And they're all like, 
ah, the fancy gear, the football boots, and be like, yeah. And back in the day, the World Cups were something like, you know, we'd sit like, we had a small team, mm. literally the whole room filled with people, true, true, true. Yeah. and uh, right after that, we'd go play. Mm. So uh, I was like, yeah, I really want to learn football. And yeah. we started playing. But uh, no, I just, you know, for some reason, it just didn't, <laughs> didn't you know, stick to you. No, no, no. no, no. no. And even cricket, because and then all these sports, I won't say I tried to that level where I actually, you know, make it a point where I go practice and do that. Mm-hmm. It was just like just in front, of, like in the 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 Shinong football ground, yeah. so, true, true, things like that. And uh, but <laughs> eventually, you just realize when you suck at it, you're like no, it's, it's not meant for you. No, 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 it's like, meant for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's not meant. Like yeah, yeah, go on, go on. Sorry, my apologies. <laughs> no, no, I tend to have this habit of always like going with right, people. So yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, so it's like yeah, like I said, football, cricket. Uh-huh. Um, what else did I try? The guitar. I really sucked at that. Okay. <laughs> my my brother's my, my younger brother's a great guitar player though. Okay, he's, okay, you know, he's apparently he's he's uh, I don't know, made for like what is he? He has a talent for that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Um, I do sketch though okay. sometimes. Okay, all that. So everyone tries all that. So. Yeah, yeah. Ultimately, this is the thing that you know, finally end up to you. I mean, yeah, some yeah. stick up to you. you know? Yeah, like some stuff. I always believe. Like for me personally, like I have never been a football player. Too, for mm-hmm. your information, I wasn't. Uh, tried football. Was always in defense. Mm-hmm. Suck at it. I can hit the ball properly though, but uh, not so much. <laughs> but yeah, that's the one thing I can do properly. But then later on, like you said, it has to have a certain knack to you, know, mm-hmm. some something that you can actually like be like that one. Yeah, yeah. You know? I think for you, probably not getting the chance of writing cycle is one of the things that made you like quite intrigued. But once you touch the handlebar, yeah, I guess it really just yeah. like, spoke to you, man. Exactly. So uh, I and and right after that, like um, I think after all my trials of everything, yeah, yeah. Um, started the era of the X Games. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah, I, I think came, uh, ten sports that time. Like, ESPN. ESPN. Yeah, ESPN. Yeah, ah, yeah, ESPN. yeah, yeah. And I was just going to the game. Like, ah, oh, that looks so cool, you know. And, and was it? Did it came prior to like before you learned cycle, or was it before? After I learned. Okay. I mean, then, yeah, I, I learned how to cycle, but like I said, I never had the keen interest of actually. Like, I never. I mean, who would have thought back then that you could do it as a professional <laughs> yeah, sport yeah, and stuff true. like that? That's it was true. always like a childhood hobby mm-hmm. that everyone does. And um, I saw these crazy things on TV with all the mega ramps and stuff. Like, <laughs> like I want to try that. And then I started, you know, stacking up bricks and putting a plank. And, st- and you fell again, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, started jumping, doing all the crazy yeah, things. Yeah. Uh-huh. I get beat up by my mom. Like, why would you do all that? You know, things like that, yeah. I mean, those old school moms are the most scariest yeah. ones, man. Seriously. Yeah, man. <laughs> They're like... They grew up like that. And, yeah. Yeah, it's... Had a conversation with uh, one, I think you know DJ Lag. Like, my yeah, yeah. If you're watching this, man, yeah, this, yeah. shout out to you. So we were talking about the conversations. I was saying, uh, like, you know, have you ever noticed that every time when you're about to get scolding, about to get a huge beat up, the sky can be so black, exactly. and like you know that it's something it's, it's, about it, you know. <laughs> you, you have, a, and then it just doesn't stop there. You get a beating, and then you get a you get more beat up for crying. Yeah, and, like stop crying, and you're just yeah. holding yourself and. <laughs> Man, like, <laughs> that, that, that is something. But 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 that I I always say like yeah I I am really like I really appreciate being raised up the right way. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, with all due respect to the youth nowadays, I mean, yeah, it's good that we protect them. I mean, you sound so old saying all this, but yeah, I mean, I, I, that's <laughs> what I'm saying, man. I I I am actually uh, for your information. I'm not trying to flex here, but I am 27 years old today. Mm-hmm. So yeah, happy birthday. So, so, <laughs> So yeah, like I'm saying, get, getting old. Um, yeah. Like I'm not judging the youth or the parents out there, mm-hmm. but it's like me and you. I remember those times when we get beating with like, oh, mm-hmm. you know, f the parents, right? I mean, mm-hmm. f the authority kind of thing. But then I feel like we are born in such a way where we understand the value of integrity of principles. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm not trying to say to all the youth out there that they are bad or anything, but I feel like that has really. No, no, things change. Society yeah, has things changed. Things has changed. Yeah, society has changed to such a level where we don't see much of that anymore. And mm-hmm. I feel like uh, it's like something that I, I'm just happy that I was born there. You know, yeah, like me yeah, and you, yeah, we, we grew up in that age, age. Yeah. being able to see the changes mm-hmm. and actually, you know, realizing that you know it was so much so much better back then. Yeah, yeah, true, true. It is. Yeah, definitely they are like good I mean, things. Back then we were like, no, like. Why are we going through all this? Exactly, you know. But then now you realize, like, yeah, yeah, it was a good way of growing up. 
the pros and cons are there, obviously. So you yeah. know, can't deny that. Yeah. So I just want to. I was intrigued about one thing about you is that when I was thinking about you know like what to interview you and all that, you know, like you are such a genuine guy that I found that when we talk, it's like really like the conversation flows a lot. So were you like a very you know because you went to these. X games and all that stuff. Are you a very extroverted person, or are you like very like you know introverted, or maybe because you're so introverted that you want to do something to prove to other people, or is it that kind of um, thing? I don't know, man. Because uh, up until college, I was yeah, I was really, I was a shy person, like you know, like just usually not a, not alone all the time, but like a very small circle. And yeah, I didn't really. It was basically the the whole. My my job and uh, all that that really opened up, um, you know me being. Uh, I realized that yeah, you if you if you run a business, you just have to be true to yourself. True, and true. People realize that, and I've noticed that in people you know talk to them and all that. Yeah. You just show your genuinity, and then you don't. Not I won't say fake it, but you, yeah. if you go according to the books, it's so. It's so predictable, right? True. I mean, true. true. A typical salesperson trying to sell you something. You know, it's like yeah, welcome sir, good morning, and mm-hmm. blah blah blah. And yeah. it's just like there's no um, sort of a proper interaction in a way that there's a it's he treating him in a in a personal level because people yeah. like that personal touch. Yeah, and that's why I also like to learn languages. <clears throat> so whenever we talk, and then I I, I ask them where you're from, this and that. I try to relate, yeah. and that that gives them that you know that, that personal touch, and then they mm-hmm. they feel they, they feel more attached, and then yeah. yeah. So that's how we have genuine customers, and we have. People who are like uh, you know, like they come back and then you know loyal, loyal yeah. customers basically. Yeah. I think that that like you said, the personal touch is one thing that really mm-hmm. you know has that. I mean, it feels like you're fake sometimes. You know, when you're like going to these Hyundai and they, yeah, because exactly. you've been scripted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. scripted. I mean, that's how they've been taught and how that's how um, that's how everything works. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but then I I studied marketing. Mm-hmm. I, uh, Oh, but okay. I never went to the books. Yeah. Oh, flex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> never went according to the books, really. I yeah. My sir will watch this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this went my way, you know. Okay. Yeah. I sucked at accounts. I sucked at accounting, but I'm still running a business, you know. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So things like that. But yeah, it just you just have to have the sheer passion, man. Mm-hmm. It's going to go. It is something that I think you, you just have to be like on the move and just learn many things as you walk you know yeah, there's something you learn I, 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 you, you're never built for yeah. that you I mean you may be to a certain extent but then you keep on building you know true true, true. true. sky is the limit like you yeah. say I mean like speaking of this is a good segue actually if you're thinking about you know like I, I, I'm not trying to like lampoon the the gen, present generation mm-hmm. here, yeah. but I'm trying to say is that nowadays I feel like people are so comforted by the whole situation where you know, you get instant validation. You get whatever it may be, whatever you do, you if you want something, you want if a guy wants a six pack app, he'll just you know take this pill and get a six pack app or use your exercise belt or whatever it may be. But they don't know the sheer practice and the sheer dieting behind it. You know why because I talked about that is that I have seen people doing that. But you I think you have made so many mistakes before mm-hmm. reaching to this point where you're able to talk to people, you're able to be here with me talking. So what are like the struggles that have gone through, man? Like, you know, to reach this point in your life where you'd be like, yeah, I finally reached like to a point where I can actually be satisfied of me looking in the mirror kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, I, I, I would be lying if I said when it first started, like it went smooth because no, <laughs> um, but we thought because, <clears throat> because I was so used to repairing bikes, I tell you, um, I would spend literally my winter break mm-hmm. was basically me in the nearest junkyard with spanners and pliers and just going there looking for old bicycles Damn. and just taking part of bikes. That's not cool, man. So um, I would just buy scrap and try to rebuild yeah, bikes. Yeah. And that's how I, you know, uh, the the whole repairing bikes thing came. And um, initially when I started, I thought I knew. Mm-hmm. And it was only when we had the first customer walking and sent us the bike. And then he go, that's why it was like, come back. Like, no. Still not fixed, not fixed. <laughs> struggling, and he's like, it's even worse now. I'm like, yeah, man. So those were just like it was really things that keep you awake at night. I couldn't sleep, you know, yeah. because you get so, you know, you you like you think constantly thinking like, what did I do wrong? And then you'd end up 
searching on YouTube online and yeah. blah, 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 blah. I had was YouTube that time there was it like there like yeah it was there it's like hosting, hosting, but a very few but mm-hmm. then I had this book which is called the big blue book of bicycle repair from Baku nice, nice. I, nice. that was the only book that I read so much you know like I, I'm not a reader like I told you yeah yeah So that was the only book where I'm like kept me away, constantly reading, reading. But then still, you know, because <clears throat> you can go to a certain extent according to the books, but then mm-hmm. some things happen, and these are things that I mean, we're talking about bicycles. They're they're, they're made of steel, aluminium, and then yeah, yeah. they what they're writing is they're working on a, maybe a perfectly balanced bike, and then mm-hmm. when you are what you're working on is something that's been used for years and it's worn out so mm-hmm. if you try to do it according to the books also it still won't work yeah. true true so over the years then we built up the experience and then um that's how you know it's it's uh when we see based on what bikes like, mm-hmm. yeah this needs this kind of tweak mm-hmm. and it's all again all on the experience mm-hmm. and the struggles yeah the struggles were real <laughs> like you know uh, but then yeah slowly um as as the The, the whole cycling scene improved in mm-hmm. Shillong as well as the rest of India. Mm-hmm. So we had uh, companies coming in, like uh, they they would then conduct trainings and mm-hmm. stuff. True. So that's where you gain even more confidence. Okay. And uh, now it's like I would say, I'd say like that we're still, you know, like we're still, still, still not happy. Like there's yeah. still a lot more things yeah. to learn, you know. So, but yes, yeah, so far I I like I'm happy that uh, at least we've reached a certain level, but. Um, It's not. It's not. It's not the peak. It, it's there's no peak. Fast is peak though. Fast yeah. leave people looking at you. Like, I think they're done. I think they're no, no, they no, reached no. the point. But the yeah. moment <laughs> you start thinking like that, I mean, you're already. That is true. Yeah, yeah. You can't think like that. So that's how you keep. You keep thinking, man, because uh, there are times when uh, if we get stuck on some things, like yeah. and especially if it's these high-end bikes, where mm-hmm. they're very costly, and yeah. you screw up something. You yeah, know, and like, man. And I, I, I literally. Sleepless nights. I have bad moods when I talk to people because I'm constantly thinking. Yeah, because, you know that's because we love what we do. You know, true, true, true. I'm not saying uh, because they, it might be rude to my customers. And yeah, yeah. Like bad mood and like sometimes friends come over and it's like, what's wrong with you? Like I'm just you know just. And then when you solve it, it's such a relief. It's true. Yeah. It's, it's 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 a big accomplishment. Yeah. You know. I think uh, you're so be proud of you, man. Like you know, going through like you see marketing, right? So you're going through all this and you're trying to perfect your craft. I think. I think he did his. I think in a small incremental way, he has really helped you to really not give up and using the marketing strategies to be able to yeah, reach yeah. his point. I guess. So thanks to my, I mean, uh, my teachers have always backed me up on this. Mm. Uh, I would say, see, we still are in a society where I'd say because I've been told. I mean, whatever this thing that I'm doing yeah. is not being considered as a job. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> it's so out of the box, yeah, man. Yeah. Seriously, dude. So they're like. You're working here, but have you applied for something else? <laughs> applied for what? You know, yeah. like no, like just that. And like, okay, so if I do that job, who's going to repair bikes here? Yeah. Um, true, true, true. So even at home, uh, I think they initially they were not really happy with me doing this. Um, it was my teachers again, my uh, my, yeah, my sir, who always had like always back me up on this and like you know motivate me. And of obviously your friends and some family members yeah, and all that, but but the whole society as the society as a whole, you know, yeah. a lot of them would be like because we we're growing up in a society where it's like oh, government jobs are always the normal ultimate yeah goal ultimate friend, goal right? yeah yeah stability is there always that's uh, the word yeah so, <laughs> get married soon <laughs> so uh, I really but but again. Uh, Like I said, thanks. Like well, because of the pandemic, it's mm. made people realize that they can do so much more yeah, yeah. during the free time, and they they started thinking of doing other things. You know, mm-hmm. like you starting this, and yeah, yeah. shout out to you, man. This is thanks, this man. is great. I mean, we need something like this. We need uh, a lot of things that basically because the whole crowd is directed to such a uh, a way mm. that this whole empty space, which is no, it's not empty. It's full of opportunities, but then nobody's really looking at. Yeah. So we actually, I think, and I and I I believe it'll change in the coming change, years. The perspective change. will change, the the whole uh, approach will change, yeah, yeah. Um, and then people will realize, yeah, yeah, there's yeah, more potential to it. Yeah. I think Shillong is now, yeah. Shout out to James as well and Isan for being who's helped the show a lot. Mm-hmm. It's like 
like you said, it's like we have to rediscuss and talk about it. And it took us a lot of templates yeah, to reach. I think we were initially when we started discussing about this, it was when way back in December, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that time was be like this guy is flexing. Man. I think no, this no, guy's no, flexing. No, no, no. <laughs> I can tell. I can tell. I talk to people, the general people. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I, I, I was like, yeah, going down. I was like, yeah, he, he'll execute this. Like, yeah. yeah, we'll get there. And I also understand the struggles that you go through because we went through similar things. True, know? true. Yeah. I think the I think like you said, coming back to Shillong, where I think it's like Shillong right now is like a vacuum where. Like it's like it's like a catalyst where it's really needed. If you just do anything, it, it'll just happen then. Mm-hmm. And you see the music scene nowadays. You see youngsters yeah, yeah, yeah. out of the blue, rappers out of the blue, and you guys having a lot of cyclists now. I, mm-hmm. I can see people driving cyclists. I know friend Asan as well. He has a cycle himself. <laughs> this thing is not a very. It's like it, it took by storm. Man. Seriously, cycling yeah. in the world has really. <clears throat> how how did you do it, man? Seriously, no, so um, fascinated by it. I would. So there's, there's, I'd say, stages to it, mm-hmm. just like every process. Yeah, yeah. So the initial stages were basically, I, I, so, and then again, mind you, I'm, uh, whatever I'm saying is my whole perspective, my whole uh, way through this. Maybe there have been cyclists before. I mean, obviously there will be. Mm-hmm. Um, huge respect to them. Yeah. But when we first started, um, there were very few. And I remember, uh, obviously, like I told you with the X Games thing and all that. Yeah, yeah. It was always BMX the whole way, <laughs> but um, it was so hard to get a BMX bike back then. True, true, true. And uh, it was only after my tenth grade that my dad promised me to buy a bike, and then so we go to Guwahati all the way to Guwahati to get ah, okay. yeah, bikes. Yeah. I think the it was but but it's not Bajaj Hero, right? That black one, the the hero that was there. There was the Hercules. Prana. Yeah, yeah, but 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 the <laughs> my I mean at that time I would say I was pretty. Uh, I'd done my research and I would see and obviously I mean it's X Games people wearing the shirts and the sponsors yeah, true, true. so I'd see Mongoose and like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know and, and I had this yeah. word saying that yeah it's very good in God yeah. so I told my dad and for some reason we went I think a couple of times three times mm-hmm. still didn't get it and my dad was like ah, you just get something because true, this, true. I, I can't come here again and again mm-hmm. and that's where I ended up buying a mountain bike oh. so you bought a mountain bike or the BMX, BMX initially you, I had uh, like I told you, my sister's bicycle, which I turned it into a BMX to look like a BMX. So from pink to black kind of thing? <laughs> so, yeah, it was, it was, what the hell, it's like red, pinkish stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, painted up. Painted it, took off all the mudgas, took off all the brakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, all that. So, um, <laughs> that, that, that is a middle child stereotype, man. Exactly. I, seriously, it's like totally you. I actually get beat up for doing that also. You, you got beat up yeah, for that too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Back. What the <laughs> when did you do that? Yeah. So sometimes I'd have to rebuild it just to show no, them, and then slowly I get take yeah, one piece, one piece, yeah. you know. So uh, and, and, yeah, like I said, we couldn't find the BMX, so we ended up buying a mountain bike, and, oh. and that's where the whole mountain bike thing kicked up. And then uh, we had, like I told you, the issue with the spares and this and that. Yeah, yeah. So and then I had my friend Panchan, he's, he's here in the shop okay, with me the whole time. Oh. With childhood buddies, like childhood, maybe we met when we were like 20, 18, 19, I think. Mm-hmm. So. Um, we were like then yeah I had a I had a friend who had same vision same the same you know everything mm-hmm. and it felt even better and then we were like we were constantly doing this doing yeah, that that's true. riding here and there and we started meeting some more cyclists okay. I'd say and, and I, I would say people who were cycling at that time hardcore. were those hardcore ones yeah. yeah so when you meet like, like cars yeah. are huge <laughs> they like and you meet them you're like yeah, yeah. So, so we got along very well mm-hmm. So there's an initial stage of like you meeting other cyclists and maybe having a small group. Yeah, yeah. Then comes the the then came the second stage of uh, having these clubs, yeah, and associations and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So we had that. Mm-hmm. Uh, What's the name of the club? Uh, uh, back then we had something called Cycling Shillong. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. We did a couple of events. Okay. Big events, and uh, now now it's uh, it's it's called. I mean, we've changed the name to. Because cycling, cycling Shillong was too like Shillong centric. Mm-hmm. So because it, it's growing and we are going to do the whole Meghalaya, so it's called the Meghalaya Cycling Association. Oh, oh yeah, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's like always in the papers. It keeps yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty. Big. Yeah, we're very active with all of the activities we conduct races. Yeah. So that yeah, so we'll come to that later because yeah. it's going to go stage by stage, uh-huh. like I said, right? Um, then came uh, the whole club thing. Okay. Uh, then. Mm-hmm. 
when we had the club thing, that's when I met, uh, you, you saw Dr. Raj and the, he was there in the shop. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. Met him and uh, so we'd go for all these races in Guwahati and all these places. Mm -hmm. That's where I would, you know, sit and talk with him and tell him that, yeah, you know, always wanted to start a cycle shop and he was also like, yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. So then came the, 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 the shop thing. The shop thing. Oh, and I'll tell you, initially when we started, uh, we had a very small shop. I think we had only two or three bicycles for this and display. Like I said, we did not repair bikes. Mm -hmm. It was, <laughs> it, was it, it looked like a very sad, I mean, so there were times that I questioned like, oh, okay, is this going to work out? Like, yeah. you know? But, um, you just have to have the patience, like yeah. I said. Uh, to all of those who also want to start, I'd say the it's all about just if some of us are being so calculated and think so much before doing yeah. and analyzing, and mm -hmm. sometimes you end up not even starting it, and then yeah. you're like, no, it's not going to work because. Yeah. But all it takes is that first step, the first step, you know, yeah. just start it, and then when you realize it's not working out or you think it's not corrected, you know, mm -hmm. have the patience because. Um, you'll really struggle, you'll go into losses, but you just have to be patient, patient, committed. Yeah. So lots of struggles, man, initially at that time also, yeah. and, and, and uh, people were like, because they get the shock of their life when yeah. they see a bike that's costing 40,000, 50,000, like, ah, I'm just going to buy that, I'll get a scooty, you know, yeah. I'll get a motorbike with that. Yeah. So it was a huge struggle at that time. So that was the like, a few people like okay still we're buying yeah that's true and then uh i, I don't know how to term it as a trend or it's not a trend i don't want it to be a trend because that's something very short term so yeah. the cycling culture here it's picked up it's picked up a it's lot. picked up a lot so uh when we moved to this new location mm -hmm. which was like bang on the main road you know yeah yeah um, I'm very lucky to have main road yeah, seriously yeah. Yeah. it's like right the main road and like all your displays and everything yeah. I'm sorry to cut you off, but it was like always that I meet a guy and I was like, uh, do you know uh, the young shop in my shop would be like, um, oh, who's that? The guy near Jawai Road then, the, the, all the cycle, oh, that guy, he'll be like, oh, it's also a landmark, no, it's down shop and the cycling shop yeah, is like yeah, a landmark, no, landmark. down shop or cycling shop, like, okay, yeah, so, so, sorry, yeah, go so, ahead. <laughs> so the new location was where uh, we started, uh, really started, you know, people started noticing and 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 but then this like I said, if I say it from a very, uh, if if I were to describe it in like the the purchasing power of people, you know, yeah. initially they'd come up like ah, I want a cycle like for say ten fifteen thousand, and then from that mm -hmm. it went to say twenty thirty mm -hmm. twenty forty. So the spending power people are starting to understand, and again huge thanks to the <laughs> you have a, I, I sound like an asshole so I saying this, but because of the pandemic, man, it's yeah. really kicked off. Bicycle sales worldwide. Mm -hmm. There was a huge bike boom move back in 2020. Yes. When the pandemic happened. Uh, 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 yeah, so yeah. we sold a shit lot of bikes that time. Ooh, for <laughs> I, everyone's, every, every bike shop, I think, sold a whole lot of bikes all over the world. I think bike, I think that's why it's like you being on top of your game and actually being the only, like you actually <laughs> maneuvered one such a way, yeah. you being the yeah. only one of the one Yeah, of the in a way, people. yes. So, uh, there was so much in demand and like we literally ran out of bikes and people are like, when is it arriving? I mean, two months later, okay, I'm ready to pay. Like, you know, just get me a bike. And it went to that extent. And yeah. I'm like, really happy because uh, because it, this whole thing that man, has inculcated a sense of the whole health culture, the whole true. healthy lifestyle true, true. approach of people. Yeah, yeah. When they never had it, like I said, because cycling back in the day when we started was a childhood sport. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you were like, wait, say five, six, that's mm -hmm. when... Your parents be like, yeah, let's get a bicycle. Mm -hmm. You can ride that till you're like 10, 12, maximum till you're 15. Mm -hmm. And it's just finish. there in the corner, right? Nobody thinks about riding a yeah. bicycle to college anymore. So, but that's what we did. Me and Banchan would always go to college on a bicycle. And uh, I think people would mock you like yeah, that. Time. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. It's like you're so old, and grown yeah. up men riding bicycles <laughs> and wearing a helmet. You look like a douchebag, yeah. man. Like, yeah. Why are you wearing yeah. helmets? Exactly. Like, things like that. And <laughs> being cussed out in traffic. and yeah. Hey, get out of the way, you're blocking the way, you know, blah, 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 go take your bicycle home, this, that, a lot of things. Yeah. But again, uh, things have changed now. Sure. People's perspectives have changed. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of cyclists, there's a lot of, uh, you know, even a lot of well-known people, celebrities, yeah. this, that, that have stepped up the game and now people are like, oh, okay, they're also saying, this is kind of cool, like, you know, yeah. even True. I want to get that. Uh -huh. And, um, but what I like in anything 
anything, be it my business or be it the whole culture, is the whole consistency of yeah, things. Yeah. Because you don't want to go like that and then way it's, back down. Yeah, you know, it has to be like a certain kind of consistency. You know, just keep being consistent. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, but but for a place like Shillong, I have a feeling it's going to saturate very soon. So we need to have a different <laughs> approach or something, you know. I hope so, not so soon, but like uh, something, man. Like, I know it's going to come. But it's going to come, yeah. yeah I think yeah. you have to be ready for the next storm, man. Huh? Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. But I think social media has really helped you. Yes. I think you, we were, just to be frank with all the people out there, we, we actually had a conversation for this. <laughs> so, yeah, just to be very candid with you guys. Yeah, so I don't be like, you know, like, oh, you're going to be like, he remembered all things. It's so, like, we had a conversation for this. So. Uh, but I want to ask you, like, like, remember that time we were discussing and you were saying something about your, you're saying during, I really want to go back to that point where you were saying that, you know, you were like building those cycles, right? I think it was near Manchis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Manchis. Shout out to Anna. <laughs> <laughs> so, if that time, I think it's been like the mocking thing started from there. And you being in college, you're in college. Yeah, I was in college. Yeah. Like, you, you actually went from there to that. And I just want to know, like, where do you get the balls, man, to do that? <laughs> Like, okay. it, 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 it all, because Manchi is a kind of posh place, to be frank to all the people out there. It's, it's considered that place. But mm-hmm. you seeing that, I think people would give you like a smirk, or not a smirk to say, but those looks, you know, that you totally understand something. And, and to be very honest, I mean, honestly, it was Anand, like I said, mm-hmm. one of Manchi's was the guy who got us that place there. Mm-hmm. He's like, man, like, we were looking for a shop. Like, yeah, it's right there. You just have to build a wall and just paint it. It'll yeah. look great. So, um, it was okay because I think that was the perfect location because we didn't have a lot of in, like customer inflow or walk-ins because it was sort of in the corner, right? Yeah, true. true. And uh, it was always like you said, these munchies customers would just walk in and like, oh, how much are these items? And see the price, like, okay, let's go. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so we we I think if we had this current location, we had started there. Yeah, yeah. There would have been like. Uh, like a lot of info and back then we didn't know stuff true that, true that and we really mess up and people like yeah that, that, mm-hmm. that like shop shit man like, yeah. like don't go there you know so in a way it was good that we started really small and yeah. there in the corner and we got to improve there exactly and then when, once we had a little bit of polished skills then we, had, we came here and that's when people saw and they're like yeah. okay at true. least like, they know what they're doing yeah. you know I, I think it's one of the things that like you take these small steps like sometimes maybe like you said just now you, you pointed out a very good point just imagine you got the shop mm-hmm. and suddenly you got the shop. Fine. But you don't know the, the skills to do it. Like suddenly if you put in a huge position and you don't have the ability to exactly. use those resources to mm-hmm. your ability, you will just look like a fool. It's like you're learning to play a guitar and just going yeah. to the big stage. <laughs> you just not even learn how yeah. to play and you're just going to go there and start. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's the small things that matter. Yeah. 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 So yeah, go on, go on. So where were we just now? Um, so yeah, yeah. Like, like I said, uh, the whole when I was in even when I was in college, um, I had always. I think uh, it was all since school also that I never really, I was never really. I would really feel bad, so bad about the whole uh, my my friends, the whole uh, academic side of things, just going that side, and I'm like, I can't go there. I don't want to go there, but it's the way everyone's going. You know, like um, when you're in your. Like I did 10, after 10, you go 11, 12, and you yeah. have a street. Uh, and I took up science. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, physics is there. I mean, it's kind of needed to your mind. Something, okay, whatever. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> science, you took it. I sucked at it, you know? Okay, okay. And then you have um, all, these, all these really, you know, really good students there. Yeah. And then I, Early in the morning when you come to class, you don't see a student make because before that I would hang out in a very chill group. Uh-huh. And when we come to class, we see someone reading a book, be like, hey, what are you doing? Man? Yeah. <laughs> you dumb or what? Like, you know. I mean that's that's how that's that's the norm during our time. That's the norm. And then suddenly when I reach <laughs> like my eleventh and uh, I see these really good students like coming early in the morning and like just glued to their books and yeah. like what the hell is happening here? Like, you know, and then teachers explaining, I don't understand shit. Why, why did I go for this? And there was a time when I actually like thought, I took the wrong decision. Maybe I should go back to some arts, commerce, whatever, yeah. right? But uh, I just held on to it, you know? And then 
towards the end of the, the school, I mean, towards the class 12, end of class 12, everybody's, you know, prepare, like, preparing for their Oh, was the exams back then? What? Oh, GE? Oh, SSLC? Yeah. All this, yeah, yeah. No, no, no the, the, the competitive exams that you do after your 12. <laughs> I don't want to say any names, <laughs> but you know, you guys, you know. <laughs> so everybody's like, you know, busy yeah. preparing for that, preparing for this. And it's like, uh, I, I, I think I just stick to my finals, just clear my finals, yeah. you know. That's true. Um, then, uh, yeah, then, then came the whole results thing. Mm. And everybody's like, and I'm like, now where do I go from here, you know? The college happened and like what do I do and I'm just out of the prospectus just like ah, this looks good maybe I should join this what is this BBA let me do some research you know <laughs> I applied I got in and that's how things went but yeah like again uh, because I, I studied in army school uh, uh-huh. since nursery till 12 oh to, you were not yeah. how did you learn this? it's not uh, okay. it's wrong the CBSE the whole way uh-huh. Uh, it, it was a different environment that we grew in, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, different, all different the people from all the country are there, like you know. So when you go to Anthony's, it's like a different, a whole different place. And yeah, it's yeah. sort of hard for me to blend in. True, true. But true. eventually you do blend in, and then uh, yeah, again, like even when I do, then then when I got in college was when uh, I started really getting into the whole cycling thing as well. So that's where I applied. Uh, what I was interested in to my projects and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would always have presentations related to this, have my whatever, you know. Mm. And 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 it's it's a nice thing to do because it's like if you try to do something that would look fancy to the teachers, like you know things like ah, blah, blah, and you don't know the the basic of it, sure, or you don't know the whole parts of it, and then some they ask you a question and you're like, you're blank. Yeah. Blank. So I would stick to this and and they knew like you know yeah. this guy's into it so. Yeah. Even if they ask me questions, I'm like, ready, mm-hmm. like, yeah, I can answer everything and things like that. So I got the support of the teachers back then. Yeah, okay. uh, they always supported me. And uh, you, move, you move it well, man. I mean, that's that's how you, that's that's the cheat code, by the way. So <laughs> stick to what you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, like I said, but I, 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 there were times when I tried to do something out of the box and yeah. fail miserably. You know? oh. That's how you learn. Oh. Uh, look, you know, sometimes you look like an ass, like, what is he doing? Like, you know, like ah, sorry, I made a mistake. I'll just re myself and yeah. get back to what I was. That's true, that's true. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, the thing is, I always get fascinated is that during our time, mm-hmm. we were we were made in such a way where we cannot think outside the box. We just kind of like, okay, like, you go for arts, you go for science. Okay, yeah, yeah. You, you got a good mark in science. Okay, you can go for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, without considering the fact that we have some other things in store. Exactly. And so so sad that we are so narrow-minded when it comes to these kind of convent- I mean this kind of like education system we are like made in the same cookie cutter kind of ways like you know like oh we be that one you be that yeah. one engineering doctor and, but thank god with now social media and then shout out to that time we had this movie uh, the Amir Khan movie uh, Three Kids yeah yes That's, that kind of opened a lot of eyes yeah, for yeah. Of, especially Indians in a way yeah. the whole, whole Indian culture of like yeah. it's a boy engineer it's a girl doctor mm-hmm. things like that you know it kind of opened yeah. the whole, like, the people saw it differently that, yeah, mm-hmm. it, you need not be an engineer or a doctor or some high professional profession, like, like things like that, you know, true, just true, be, true, true. Just do what you love because yeah, yeah. Um, I think uh, one more thing is that what I realized because uh, I'm here doing this mm-hmm. and uh, I get to interact with some of my friends who are in a job also we're working yeah but it's a job that uh, I mean they're, they're interested in something else that's how everyone I mean that's how most of the things are happening nowadays like yeah. you end up working in a job where you know you, you work because you're getting paid and you don't really like the job yeah and uh, you're just waiting for the end of the month and when I get my pay yeah. and, like even you know like it's like you even like sitting in such a boring desk and like even taking a pee from that is like relax for you. Yeah. Because, so a lot of people go through that mm-hmm. and uh, I would be lying if I said that my job is so interesting that I never get bored of it. Yeah. I do get bored of it sometimes. I do get bugged. Mm-hmm. I do get tired. Yeah. Um, but it, I, I, I'm assuming it's not as tiring as working in a job where you're like, you literally don't like the job but you're just yeah. working. You know? mm-hmm. It's all about the job satisfaction thing. Yeah. Um, at least if you're working, uh, if you're doing this, yeah. um, and then this is maybe, bad. I mean, I really hope you grow from this and yeah, yeah. make this your your thing and you grow big. Yeah. 
uh, you will enjoy doing it no matter what. I mean, you just came back from work. I really <laughs> admire that. You just came back. You came back. I met you there, and you just oh, so they, yeah, you just sitting here. Like, yeah. So that's that's the, the pure determination, pure the, the the what interests you. You know, that you that you you really want to do this. Yeah. And I don't think you feel tired doing that right now. Yeah, it's it's a bit tired. Yeah, but the good, you know, like the the ambience one thing. Yeah. Right? yeah. If 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 you really, I mean, like when you meet a good person. And when we have like proper company, that's what mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that's that's the thing. So, uh, like I said, like, uh, and, and I really felt like I feel bad because, um, especially like I told you, I like going outdoors. I like going. So when I see um, the tourism department, mm. um, <laughs> uh, I see most of some of my friends study the whole tourism hospitality thing. True, but. I don't, uh, very few of them are actually be able to work in that field mm-hmm. in the government department because for some reason there's some other person that works there. Like who, a middleman kind of thing? No, no, no. no. So like a person who's who doesn't have that background in a oh, way. I, I don't know. Yeah. Most of the time that's what I see. What are you trying um, to see? It's a person who hasn't like taste like the dirt before. No, no, no. no, no. What, what I'm saying is I said like like if I would like my job right yeah if I was to go would go with my science background and I go mm. I didn't go to marketing I would study say BSc and then do all my masters and then come start a bike shop it's yeah. like it doesn't blend in yeah. and similarly with government departments we talk about tourism department we talk about any other department mm. is people working them because the the way they the procedure of selecting mm. the candidates to work there is very generic like you just have to be a graduate or something like I don't I, I really don't know I yeah. Don't, I may be wrong. Oh, I don't. I don't think I'm wrong because that's why the gov- the, the the departments are so messed up because yeah. there are people working there mm-hmm. who uh, who are like. I mean, I'm not. Uh, I would respect they applied for the job and they got a job there. Yeah. But then there are people who have studied specifically for say tourism. Yeah. I'm, I'm taking tourism into consideration because that's an easy topic yeah. to discuss on. Some people have studied did their masters in tourism mm-hmm. and hotel management and whatever. But those people are not being able to work in that department, oh, you know. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. some other, maybe some someone who does did a BSc mm. or MSc in some something that's not related to that department, you know. Don't you agree with that? Don't you see that? I think that's the whole <sighs> selection procedure that happens and yeah, that happens. Like you're not doing due justice these people, they're not doing due justice to anyone. Yeah. Either to, to the society that they I mean the, the department that they're working in yeah. or like even to the people that they serve, even to themselves, they're mm-hmm. not doing justice. So that's why when like, you go to these offices, they're always so cranky. Yeah, so <laughs> like, like, get yelled at like, oh what happened? <laughs> yeah. So if I think things would have changed a lot if actually these people who were really uh, quite passionate, enthusiastic about the thing they love and they work there, mm-hmm. you know, it's great because uh, you look at uh, the whole because I talk about tourism because Meghalaya has so much potential for that. So much potential. And, but then it's sad to see that it's not really going that way. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously they're doing their best. Yeah. Hats off to that. Yeah. But it can be done so much better. Yeah. You know, obviously this all like I said, even I would say with my business also, mm-hmm. somebody might be looking at me like he can do so much better. Yeah. Obviously. So uh it would have been so much better if that happened because I have a lot of friends who have a hard time getting a job and yeah, uh, that is true. But then you, when you know, it's like people who are not, I wouldn't say qualified, who, who, people who are, they may be, it's the whole selection procedure that mm. they take into consideration yeah. for getting into that. They could have maybe made it a more, a little more specific, specific. but um, I think it's a hard task. <laughs> yeah. I mean, easy for us to sit here and say that, but uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's like, you know, sometimes like, I feel like this, this, the, if you're talking about jobs, right, mm-hmm. it leads to a point where we, I feel like, a person tends to go to a point where it's like the tipping point of his, you know, his mental health, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I remember the other day we talked about mental health a bit. I was mm-hmm. like, because I was really touched by mental health because during twin, the pandemic yeah, hit, yeah, yeah. it was a huge issue, right? Exactly. Yeah. And so now, on top of that, you're not getting a job. Mm-hmm. Two years we had done because two yeah. years we didn't get to do anything. So, like, what is your view on mental health? Like, for me, mental health is one of the things that has really impacted and has been in the forefront now. So, like, do you do you, okay like let's not talk about these other jobs but for you personally like when you were going to school and you know and you tried out for many other things you reached a point where you're like you know depressed and like actually yeah, I, things i think everyone goes through that yeah. at some it's all about the you know magnitude of it yeah yeah you know um everyone goes through it we mm-hmm. all go through it uh 
I've been in those situations and you just literally like uh, you <laughs> you sat through that I mean like you don't know what to do yeah I went through it like I told you when I went to school after my 10th and I like I swear I took up science and then I realized like shit what did I just do yeah yeah that was that time for me for me were like like what did I do like did I make the wrong decision yeah. what am I going to do now mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's like such a waste of time such sure, a waste sure. of whatever right yeah so everyone goes through that and it's all about levels yeah um the but but one thing that i always uh, i've always just recently adapted or sort of uh, kept myself uh, you know thinking about it and like trying to apply it is that mm-hmm. you are entirely a creation of who you think you are yeah you know the mind does so much because uh be it anything because we what like you can literally drink like you could tell me this is some good coffee from somewhere yeah. like right like and you'd have another cup saying this is the normal coffee normal coffee and i'll taste it and be like yeah this one's better yeah. but then you you use the same same the same yeah. so that's that's again in your head right that's how put like like that's how um perception yeah that's how the 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 mind works it's so powerful yeah you know and and um it's instances when you can just there's an instances when you can just trick yourself but obviously um i haven't been to a point where it's so uh like i we talked about levels where it's so it's 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 bad but but that that's a point when you need professional help yeah that's when me you talking about it we don't know because maybe we haven't been there maybe you haven't been there mm-hmm. i haven't been there so i don't know the, the whole magnitude whole extent to which yeah. how that person is feeling mm-hmm. and and it's all very it's all very normal to feel sad but then there there's again the time when you can just heal yourself out of it yeah but there are times when you need professional help true 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 and uh, it's it's very important mm-hmm. to like not hold it within yourself yeah, yeah. speak it out yeah get professional help get talk to someone who is that to with and all that and it's very important because uh even with the whole uh, this whole and the thing that happened recently mm-hmm. i think a lot of people who got the the disease um i mean it's all again again it was a lot of mental thing that yeah, yeah. once you're declared that you have it you know you suddenly feel i i would I, i'll give a perfect example of myself you know okay. when 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 i met this was like the first person i met who was again he called me later in the evening saying that i've been just positive yeah. and I was completely fine before that and then the moment he told me that yeah and I'm like <laughs> it was like right before bed and yeah and like, <coughs> and like, oh shit you just You're thinking, you know yeah, so yeah. that's again your head yeah. you know and that's when you have to remind yourself no no it's it's all in your head it's all in your head yeah. it's not it's easier said than done it's easier said than done but then um I mean this is a very serious issue that true uh, a lot of us go through nowadays and it's not I mean it's it's not to be taken like that yeah. um I think obviously Yeah that's what I sort of you about I feel like you know like if you think about it I think one of the things that in society nowadays I feel it's wrong especially it's like therapy is on things a little bit taboo is a little bit like you know it's like not conventional or it's like you know people don't want to go to therapy mm-hmm. it's like they still have that that mentality is like as just people, yeah you be as kind of thing yeah I think therapy can really help you it's yeah, yeah. time and time again yes yes it does and uh The thing is that um when you first go into that and it's very important uh to to whom you're sharing it mm-hmm. that's a very important thing I mean it's very important to share it with someone who understands yeah. because uh you may share it and you know you be humiliated about it and that even brings you even more down yeah, yeah. and uh, so it's very important who you talk to also mm-hmm. it need not be a, 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 a psychiatrist or a counselor true it can be your close friend who mm-hmm. you really can open up when yeah. you when you're in that situation you know yeah, yeah. so it's very important for mm-hmm. you to open up to the right person mm-hmm. if you, if yeah. not everyone can understand that thing. exactly it's so the perception thing and um, this will be a good segue to again like because you have dogs right mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> so i think that 
I think having a dog can really help you a lot in all these does, situations. Does. Like you must be having like a like a really like stupid dull day, and you like you had this customer who's been screaming at your face, <laughs> and you're like, you get like okay, you'll get the bike. <laughs> Calm down, man. Mm-hmm. And so you go after that huge. Just imagine like situation. You go back home and you meet your dogs. You have two, right, man? Stay. I have two. Yeah, two dogs. So what are the name, man? One's Bruno, one's Milo. So the the Bru- Bruno is older. Bruno is the older one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's he's. And he's also, he's also gone with us, man. He's become a trail dog. <laughs> he literally follows me when I'm riding. Okay. When he's bombing down trails, also he's like wow. keeping up with the pace and all that. Okay. It's really cool to have him. And yeah, you could literally like be like, and and like you said, this dull days. It so happens that it starts very early in the morning. Even like right in traffic, it starts, and then the work, <laughs> and you come home also, you get the yeah. same shit again. Yeah, yeah. And you're just like, what the fuck? you know, like <laughs> this. True, true. He's just sitting and what I usually do is yeah, I go outside, sit in the stairs yeah. and they'll just come, they'll just lick you, whatever you do. Yeah. And so you just feel better, man. True, true. It's it's a nice thing to have pets. But <laughs> I also uh I'm very well aware of not being too attached to them also because you know. Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's very hard. Yeah. It's good at the same time. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's it's mixed mixed it's, feelings, really. Yeah, it's kind of very uh it's like you have to be attached to them as long as they're still there, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like um, with the talking about pets, I mean, like we always have these family members whom we always like. Maybe we always take life so for granted nowadays. It's like even we have a certain relative who's like you know that we think that he'd always stay or she or he mm-hmm. will always be there, but suddenly you disappear and they disappear. It's like you know something like that. Yeah. It's like, dude, what, what could I have done to at least be there and say like you know the things I'm about to say? Yeah, yeah. So like. Do you feel like sometimes when you are in that moment where like you you have those incidences happening to you, mm-hmm. do you feel something like you know like I could have done better? I could have like you know been. I think you met like lots of people yeah. that, especially the pandemic has really hit hard. Mm-hmm. So have you ever like you know think about that? Um, like, about yeah, you know, like, like one day at a time. Kind of thing? Um, fortunately, touch wood, it wasn't like they weren't really the really close ones mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because that hits you hard. Yeah, and. Uh, you, I've had this, such instances, and that's why uh, I've always told myself like make the best use of whatever it is right now. You know, true, true. that's why when I go outdoors or when I go to all these places, also I just you just live in the moment, man. Forget yeah. your cell phones, forget your selfies. Yeah, yeah. Live in the moment. Spend quality time with the people, like true. interaction, talking. Yeah. Um. So and 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 make sure it's all the positive things. It's all the yeah, good memories, yeah, yeah. which is. See, it's, it's it's easier said than done again. Yes, so done. you need to have a really good company and all that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's always I've always said to myself, it's like there's no point regretting after it's gone. You know. Yeah, yeah. Just do like just do it right now. Yeah. Although I do, I I don't know if I've uh, really done those mm-hmm. things yet or things like that. It's very yeah. hard. It's very hard. So it's complicated. You just have to keep doing. That's why that's why I love being outdoors. That's why I love. Because I want to make the best use of my, say, so to say, prime years. Yeah. Because we're gonna get old in no time, and yeah. by the time you know you're having a back ache, you track for a while. Exactly, you know, exactly. So just make use of the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think you said very true. You know, living the moment, mm-hmm. and I feel like conversation is such a lost art, man. It's like it's such a lost art, dude. Yeah. Like, I go to a like cafe sometimes. I see like friends sitting over like van oh, like, That's <laughs> it's. It's, it really gets to your brain sometimes, yeah, man. Like, yeah. you know, talk. Yeah. Talk. You know, like, like, opposite to each other, they're like, this, that is like, we're like, yeah, here, yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. like. <laughs> and social media has really, social, everything has its pros and cons. Yeah, true, uh, true. Social media has really helped in a lot of ways, but also created that, yeah. like what we talked about. Yeah. Um, uh, because, see, when one, one, and, and it's not just, the kids these days, it's also our parents that have, you know, like the people who, uh, like elder than us, older than us, they have this technology now and they are also, because that's how they do, that's how these uh, companies play with your dopamine, you know, the, so the, the, yeah, yeah. So the, the whole red notification, like constantly like, oh, yeah, like, yeah. and um, uh, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen the changes in a way saying that because when I grew up, when we grew up, I think mm-hmm. we barely, I don't know if you celebrate the birthdays, I know this, we celebrate my birthdays. 
ಮೊಮೆಂಟ್ <laughs> thing happens and everyone's like uh, yeah so good and after that it's like uh, and then again checking like oh, i posted it on my selfies and, no i posted it so it's like who's checked it who's seen it yeah it's dinner time oh uh, yeah <laughs> man it's like i would say i even i'm like maybe yeah we're talking about it but even i get because it's so hard to not get into it mm-hmm. they've made it in such a way you know yeah i have you use social media i use social media yeah. and all that notification thing triggers you so much that that's how that's how, like like i said they they do the research they they learn how the mind works yeah, and yeah. you're like looking at it and like oh, constantly yeah, you know like oh, who's like my pictures mm-hmm. who's commented who's doing this doing that and um that's how uh, like i said that the the changes over time and social yeah. media and and uh it's sad to see that uh i don't know if how, I, because how long has it been when you you know listen to podcast and stuff i think i've i've been listening to podcast straight when joe rogan came to be okay. i was like into it and then uh um, no jumpers is another one i think abun preach if you guys like abun preach is one of my favorite still date yeah uh, so these is really like so, really pop that thing again yeah so i think um things that we are doing that's why we click so well and there's a specific target that this whole thing is targeted to because not everyone's going to enjoy listening to all this conversation you know so one hour long is like who the hell listens to that but, but but once you get into it it's so entertaining it's so educational it's yeah. so informational at the same time um because i see a lot of my younger brother not I'm not he's also he's not ready to all that but a lot of these kids in this generation which is constantly scrolling it's all reels true true because why nobody will know nobody can watch more than like what 30 seconds, 30 seconds of a clip or one minute yeah, yeah and that's how the reels thing came in mm-hmm. you know, like constantly showing doing the dumbest shit <laughs> I, just, i know man and you get you know you feed out of all the views and the likes yeah. and this and that and um <laughs> and honestly looking at all that is where i like i said looking at all that getting really fed up like maybe what are these podcasts and i start listening to them and it's like it's it's also your desire to be not be like that and do something else and true and true and that's where these podcasts really uh like that's when i really started listening to all of this and and noticed that maybe I mean, not all podcasts i say but like some of them the very i listen to i think a lot of you who are watching this should also uh check out planet visionaries on on spotify it's a show by alex honnold mm-hmm. i don't know if you know alex honnold he's a free solo he's a rock climber he okay. basically free solo is what you climb without ropes oh yeah, yeah. there's a movie made up on him um, i i think yeah. the only free solo i remembered was did, did tom cruise do that whole mission impossible thing did he did like the rail or is it like fake um that's i i i, I, I don't, don't know saying that he was like really doing it for real like yeah, that's what yeah. so this is like they said the guy he, he does all this and and he's because i listened to his podcast and he was also on the joe rogan show yeah. i listened to all of that and i just really admired the person because mm. you know he's he's really not living in the present with a lot of the crowd nor is he way back but he's just in his own you know yeah, yeah. and that's what i really admired it's like yeah it's that's how we should be in a way maybe maybe i'm 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 coming to like from my mm-hmm. perspective um so yeah that's the show which i really listen to i listen to joe rogan i listen to quite a lot of like yeah so some of them you just like a lot of i'm really into bikes and cars also yeah. so i listen to a lot of those also okay okay yeah so i mean podcasting has really changed like it has really taken by storm yeah, actually yeah, yeah. i mean like I, I, what shall we say like we have to adapt to change no doubt about it it's like it's nice to have instagram it's nice to have that and it's good to be like i'm not saying to all of you out there is that it's not i'm not saying that it's not good to use a mobile phone is always good mm-hmm. but 
if you're there with a friend, you're about to talk to them. I mean, have a good conversation with them. Yeah. You take the time to understand the person. I feel like nowadays because we're so limited to such an extent, like you see 30 seconds of that real thing and TikTok and all that stuff. You're so like, your mind span is so small mm-hmm. where you just like, you know that. And you think you know the person just by looking at his profile or whatever. Right? Yeah. Because we don't, we hardly interact anymore. <laughs> we don't. We don't. Like we look at my profile and ah, oh, you ride bicycles. And like the bicycle guy kind of thing yeah. yeah but I'll tell you very honestly I <laughs> this is the part it's like I don't own even like a big bike a mountain bike I don't have one oh, um, okay, okay. I have like I think you must have seen I have a BMX yeah yeah so again uh, it's again um, like what you'd expect from someone if he's really into that sport if he's really into that particular hobby is that he's, he's constantly glued to uh, reading about it and yeah, things yeah. like that but <laughs> not like that you know I I, read, I like to watch other things but not like this also to a certain extent because I need it for my job mm-hmm. but it's it's not that much you know like okay just okay okay there is this a new thing that came and yeah. blah, blah, it's this technology and this and that and that's how uh, because we've worked on it we, we've worked on bikes we know how the whole system works we know how the processing works mm-hmm. how you know the manufacturing works what's made of and i won't say we know everything yeah we know very still very, very less very few, yeah. so but then like i said um because information is so easily available nowadays yeah. you tend to you could just do research overnight if you're not you're not a cyclist you could just do research overnight and tomorrow by tomorrow you turn into this bike nerd that yeah. you're like oh I, you know oh, this geometry is like ah oh, maybe it could have been a six yeah. five degrees, six four degrees <laughs> But you that. honestly, you should, it's just the reading that has helped you, the reading. Mm-hmm. But you have no practical experience mm-hmm. with that. And that's what I term as, most people term it as like, in cycling, the bike nerds. Yeah, they hardly ride. Yeah. Um, just very sorry. To... <laughs> it's okay. Man. It's they're everywhere. Exactly. Yeah. So they just read about it and just constantly reading, reading. Yeah. And they think they know everything, you know. Yeah. So they're like... They are, it's always about the latest thing, you mm-hmm. know, like it's un, kind of annoying when they come, especially I, where I work and they're like, no, this is, I, th- I remember it was still back in 2021 yeah. and this guy's like, oh, this is okay, but I want a 2022 version. I'm like, there was a virtual launch last night okay, and he's only wanting that. Only wanting that, yeah. And, um, and I asked him like, why do you want it? He's like, oh, it's the latest one. Mm-hmm. Like, do you notice that it's just maybe a different color scheme? With slight changes, slight changes, small and, changes, but, but but it's more expensive, you know. And then like, no, but it should be better. Like, I don't know, man. But like, no, I don't think so. Yeah. So these so-called these bike nerds and stuff, but mm. which is again, it's it's great for the for the for the companies. It's great for the industry because that's how they sell. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. That's the latest thing, the latest, the, the latest, the now, the now, the now, the now. Yeah, yeah. And, and 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 people are just buying this because and. Honestly, very some of them are like buying it and not even making use of it uh, because they buy it because it's a cool thing. It's so true, so true. Same thing with cell phones. Yeah, yeah. I really talk about like when you buy a cell phone, it's like oh, everybody wants. I don't know much about phones. Like, yeah, yes. Octocore, Dectacore, for yeah, processor, yeah. this, that. I'm like, <laughs> okay, like what about this one? No, this one's not good because blah blah. Yeah. But if you realize yeah. we, it's only a certain percentage of that phone we mm-hmm. use. It's so much more capable, but. You're just like using a small yeah, motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like what camera? Yeah. yeah that's it, good camera. Flexing purposes. Yeah. Flexing purposes. So um, that's why I really, that's why I don't, like I said, I don't have a mom bike because I go back to the roots of it mm. where it's it's all about the whole core things. Mm. I have a bicycle. When, when people ask me, like, okay, this is great. You know, like, what, what kind of bicycle do you ride? So I just tell them, I have a. Uh, 20 inch, 20 inch is like, so basically nowadays people are riding 27 or 29 mm-hmm. inches. Oh, okay. wheel size. That's a wheel size, right? Okay, it's okay. a big one. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I had a 20 inch is like the size of this, right? This is like, I think probably like your BMX, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the, B- the BMX. Yeah, the BMX. So I just tell them I ride a, I ride a 20 inch single speed mm-hmm. with no brakes. Okay. And they get like, like for a problem, like, what? Ah, and then I show them pictures like, oh, this is what you like. Yeah. Okay, great. So they, the conversation just stops there. Otherwise, if I told, if I was nerding out on my bike, like, oh, I think just don't say, oh, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't go there anymore. So like, and they're like, ah, okay. So speak, getting back to the core of it is basically mm-hmm. you, because there's so much that technology has done 
which has be it any sport for example if we talk mm-hmm. about running mm-hmm. um there's so much technology that goes into making the shoe yeah that because of that technology the athlete is performing better true just by a fraction of seconds and you start to question is is it the human capability or is What's it the technology the exactly yeah. yeah yeah so you really have to again like i'm i'm getting all of this again from the very information podcast mm-hmm. is that if you talk about sports if you talk about the peak of human capabilities mm-hmm. it's if you talk about running i see it's they say barefoot running yeah similarly talk about like rock climbing that's yeah, what climbing. alex does any times without rope yeah and if you talk about cycling is when you have the least uh features and yeah. it's your body your whole skill set that does mm-hmm. the work I cried from upper shoulder to here. I don't have breaks. Yeah. I must. I, I look like you, like a maniac. You don't have breaks. No. I look like oh, a maniac because my shoes cost me a tire. Huh? I think when people see me, like this is the guy who's like, what are you doing? <laughs> exactly. You can have a break now. <laughs> We are here now, dude. <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah, go on. So, so that's about me polishing my skills and mm. like really getting to know the bike. Yeah. There, there, there's a saying that you can ride the horse. but you having a connection with the horse is a different thing you yeah. can just sit and it you just go yeah. but there's some horse riders that have connection with the horse mm-hmm. they have such a nice connection they can you know really make the horse to me yeah. so it's two different things right yeah. and that's the thing like you can ride a bicycle with all the fancy features very true but not have the core skill set for really handling it yeah you know and you can have a very simple one where you so your skill set that does the talking you know So that's why and that's my perspective of things yeah. again and that's why I like doing it. Yeah, it's something like like you said it's like sometimes people are so engrossed in these high end things where we tend to forget like <laughs> where we were like you know like we were raised in a in a, in a generation I, I feel like we are so old guys man <laughs> so like because really, because the technology <laughs> changed so fast for us so fast so fast. Yeah. It's, it's like, we went from those cameras where you literally had to be like come in front to zoom and then go back. <laughs> It clicks yeah, you know yeah. to that to the digital camera yeah. now all oh, fancy yeah. DSLRs yeah. Like, these right and now, yeah. phones having yeah. you know yeah it's totally something yeah you were saying something. yeah yeah <laughs> so it's totally that thing but i feel like you know it has its pros and cons definitely but okay let's just transition a bit i i want to know a bit about uh, you know i i like you you have you're a very adventurous guy i know i think i've i've met other people but not as adventurous as you <laughs> so you going on these tracks that has like like it must have been long some of them how is your like would you describe the best experience that you've had like you know that you feel okay you go ahead with that first yeah that would be a good like my best experience best so experience far yeah was um it was so uh, 2014 15 i think mm-hmm. uh so we had already gone to nongre was the go to place back then because it, it, it was still it, very much on that place it is it is it was still nice because you have few people yeah so we had already gone to that place like what three four times mm-hmm. and our it was our always our curious mind of always like and back we didn't know shit man it's like google maps and see this ah oh, okay okay this this river okay we followed this up oh it reaches it reaches nokalikai so that's what we did we went to nokalikai two three times and we went to this uh, this uh, it's very famous now rainbow falls oh yeah 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 so uh-huh. so uh, we went we'll go to there and then like mom what if what if like we could then we would go back home and look at maps and be like oh if we follow this mm-hmm. see 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 it reaches in nokalikai mm-hmm. then we can climb this ridge yeah, yeah. i will reach back up and like let's do it and let's do it yeah. and i'll tell you back in the day like i we had we literally had no idea about the whole having the right equipment mm. having the right gear i was literally on my school bike Yes, very very true. <laughs> I was, I just can't. just make right. it how we be like oh let's go. Let's and go. like oh, we need okay we need like uh-huh. uh, there are a kind of very character and like oh onions and <laughs> torch light okay what else I need blanket no sleeping bag man literally stuff it in and I'm like yo let's go and we went to we, we caught the 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 sabra bus mm. from from yo okay. sat on it and we we always wanted to do the the So out of the box way, we reached Sora yeah. and we like telling this conductor, can we sit up? He's like, it's not allowed anymore. Like, please, and let's see, you can put in more passengers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll sit up. It's okay. Like, okay, fine. Go up, sit up, yeah. and then uh-huh. have the ride of our lives. You know, like wow, and see, no cell phones, no cell. Phone. Like, I don't think we had a cell phone. I, 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 I think that time was Nokia. no, no. Yeah, I, I mean, everyone had one, but I don't remember having one. I don't know. 
the, it was not about, uh, you know, like taking yeah, yeah. We like, in the moment, everyone's like, wow, look at that, wow, look at yeah. this. And then when we reached uh, Tarna, then we started checking down. Mm-hmm. And uh, the funny part was like, everyone would check down and when they reached double deck, like, everyone was stopping there and like, like locals, like, just, just, just crossing the double deck. We're not even looking at it. Exactly, so exactly. We had a mission, like we need to reach that place. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And we started, so Rainbow Falls. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, there's a, there's a, there's like a rock and then there's a shrubs and stuff there. There's okay. a tree. We're like, oh, let's climb from there. Like, yeah, I can think of plan that. Like, I don't know. Let's just climb, man. I was like, literally on my, like, you know, jeans. No proper gear, like, no ropes. Yeah. And we had me, then Bachan was there, my cousins. Uh, and we were like, yeah, let's just do it. And started climbing, started climbing, climbing. Mm-hmm. And Rainbow Falls, back then, there was no one there. There's literally no one. I think right now, you, if you go there, you, you always find someone. Yeah, yeah, it is yeah, flooded. Yeah, yeah. We're climbing this and like, I can see this shit. Oh my shit, if I fall, like, I'm so dead. dead. So we climbed up and then it's only getting dark, dark, so we needed a place to stay and then like, again, cave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's man, this is where it stopped, man. Okay, nah, man. I would say man was so, so, but like, it's just... Yeah. You have yeah. to improvise. Yeah, yeah. So, we're like, what do we do? It's like, okay. Uh, where do we sleep? Like, let's just get those leaves and stuff. Like that. Cut those, lay those, and then be like, okay, let's make food now. Start cooking. And uh, I remember we were so tired from the trek that when we ate, we were like, oh shit, we forgot plates. Oh so damn! We like we had this leaf and we like put pot and rice there. We had the whole curry thing, and we were all sitting around it and eating from there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like just you know just. Pure wild man, like, and then he's like cracking jokes, and 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 and, and obviously you, when you're going out camping, uh, I don't know if my bed's almost this, but like, yeah, you do need whiskey because I mean, some whiskey, yeah. something because it was freaking cold. You can't sleep yeah. in that cold. True, true. So we start, you know, it's like we're all drunk and like you're, you're cracking jokes and having yeah. conversations and all that. Yeah. Then we slept, and then we woke up in the morning. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, we still have like a shit lot of walking to do yeah, yeah. so we got early in the morning and then packed stuff just put it in the bag and started checking again and that was the scariest trek I've done in my life because there was literally nothing to walk on is it like this one? it was flat oh, man and then uh, some sections we had we were like it's too risky so we had to go from the riverbed to the other side and then go like that and um, it was huge rocks rocks as big as this room you know damn all of that's slippery as well. No, it's not. It wasn't that slippery. It was winter. Oh. So you could climb and then uh-huh. what you do is like take out the back, throw it up. I'll climb up. Okay. Pull the other person. Okay. There were some times when we would run out of the huge drops and like, what do we do? Oh, take out our shoelaces, join them together, tie our bags and drop them down first and then go with the person, you know? Okay. Because it was hard with the yeah. load. And I remember there was some, uh, uh, the, the, where we were crossing the ridge, I started questioning myself, like, why am I doing this? <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, I want to go home. So man. you're like flashing for your eyes, okay? Like, yeah, it's like, and there was this instant where I had my bag, and we didn't realize back then because it was a, it was quite heavy, and when we were crossing, we were supposed to actually drop the bags first. Oh. And then, so my bag suddenly is like heavier than I almost <laughs> felt behind. And it's like, <laughs> like I'm gonna fall, I'm gonna fall, and then my friend just he could, I was like. I don't know it was a very weird spot where even the person next to me couldn't access. Like he was like just really doing this. Bajan was there. Yeah, yeah. He just tapped my back and he literally could feel the relief. Yeah. In my breath like spilling. <sighs> like you know. Yeah. Because if I were to fall, I looked up. Like, you're dead. You're done. It's, it's because if you drop a rock, also you'll just hear a few click clack and then boom right on the. Yeah, you totally understand that. Yeah. So I got out of that and then. I, there was one instant where my friend was like, hey, there, there, no click, I can finally see it. And I was so happy and I looked, but then it was like, like, small, like this small, man. <laughs> so you, you know the, yeah. the amount of walking that you yeah. still have to do. True, true, true. And we just went for it, but mm-hmm. it's all again, like said, mentally, you know, yeah, yeah. like, let's just go, we can do this. We have to, because we can't, we can cannot get stuck. Yeah, yeah. So we went and, I remember we were so tired and then this other friend was like, oh, when I reach there, I'll just go to the bottom of the falls and just like <laughs> take a nice shower. <laughs> and shower, yeah. to the shock of our life and we reached there, it was so big. We were like, whoa, just, you want to go there? Like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> so we just took, took a dip and then there was another like tiring trek way back mm-hmm. to the viewpoint where the people usually, you know, take pictures mm-hmm. and all that. And uh, so we did that trek and then we reached, no, like, okay, fine. Okay. It was already like 4 or 5 p.m. by then. Okay. And we were like, uh, 
yeah, we reached here, but how do we go home now? Because uh, so we started hitchhiking. We stopped cars and we got a car too. You saw yeah. hitchhike? Yeah. I think you're the first person I've ever heard of which I can have. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> then we got, we got to Sora and then we started walking. We were like, let's just walk. We'll find something in between. Like, yeah, let's just walk. You know, we were, I think, prepared to actually walk back home also. <laughs> like, we were so, like, tired from the trek, but at the same time, wanting to go home, you know? And then we were like, we saw a truck just stopped. And it stopped. It was a truck full of cow dung. I was like, going to sit behind, like, oh, fine, man. Like, no, let's just go and, like, right back on the cow dung. We like, everyone's chill. Like, it's smelling like nobody cares. Nobody cares. You're too tired. Down. What to do? And it dropped off, I think, uh, halfway to Mojong somewhere. Then we got into another truck <laughs> where it was carrying, I think, limestone and stuff. We sat in the stones. Yeah, yeah. Nothing like this. Like, hard as shit, man. Like, we're sitting there. <laughs> Butt spinning, whole body spinning. It's like, you know, it's just we just need to get home. Yeah. And hitchhiking, hitchhiking. And then the last part was pure walking and reached home. That was. I'm just, I feel sad for the people who are unaware that, you know, like those who don't pick you up, they'll be like, oh, we saw a host the other day. I think till now the story must have gone on to the cars that didn't like pick you up then. They must be uh, telling you like, these guys was he goes or something. No, man. I <laughs> be like, you because, know, yeah, oh, honestly, the stories like shit because we're like all bad. Uh, like, who these wild people are. Yeah. My friend Panchan had a fine road over his shoulder because, that's what I'm saying. you know, like these people like, you know, no, I'm not going to <laughs> Have you people to the people who saw you and be like, they'll be like telling these ghost stories be like, you know, I saw these three guys the other day and they were like, where the guy with the rope? Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, think, yeah. and there's people believing that. So, um, <laughs> and that was one of the hardest one till date and mm-hmm. that's why when I go to certain tracks nowadays, it's, that was beats on off. such a level where it still beats off and I'm like, it's, it was nothing compared to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, like I said, um, I like going out for adventures, I like going mm-hmm. outdoors, but, mm-hmm. But also, I like what I like most about my the going to all these places is being going to that village, and, you know, seeing the whole culture there, the whole true, true. The people there, and and that's why I don't like to go with all the fancy equipment, yeah, yeah. all the gear and stuff. Yeah. I don't like to because they they they'll see you as, you know, I mean they, it's it's like you they they see you and like he's so privileged to have all that I, I, I always have this feeling yeah yeah it's like oh it's so nice for them to get to travel I don't want them to have that yeah, yeah. so when we go there um, I, I we make it a point like we blend it mm-hmm. you know? so I'm going there and we go to some of their brie like the plantation yes. I like to go with them and I'm like yeah just give me one of those whatever and I wear my chapel and stuff let's just go yeah and I will have a BD and have some <laughs> wine and stuff like that you blend yeah, it yeah. not like with all your fancy gear and yeah. backpacks and your walking sticks and stuff. I don't like to do that honestly you don't have a sense of appreciation towards anything mm-hmm. you know you don't have that pure like you know uh, you know like the physicality behind it and the sheer appreciation to the integrity of the whole thing mm-hmm. if you wear these stuff they'll be like oh this guy's such a bougie guy or something and plus they they get it I mean they, the, the, the religious get intimidated like they yeah, really you know um, I know that because we sit with them and talk with them mm. yeah, and then they look up to you like you're some you know like oh, 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 like that yeah. like no we don't want you to do that to us like just you don't because then you're like you go to the house and they're like oh, no, 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 yeah, no, yeah, that's, yeah we don't want that yeah, yeah. just take us whatever you do mm. do it with you and this mm-hmm. and that so um, and I see a lot of trekkers and uh, adventure people mm. most of them like to have their gear which is pretty handy to have your gear mm-hmm. but like I said <laughs> even with my bike and then even with my equipment I like to stay bare minimum you know Yeah. when you go it's like simple things like torch and like this that blah blah and make use of whatever is there mm. so, so it's all always the cool things true that I like to stick to it you know thinking about it trekking right I was like really analyzing about I was doing my research a bit and it really made me wonder right you know you going to these treks right when you're done with you know your trekking especially that trek that you had do you feel like a sense of like spiritual connection to the whole nature that I yes I do exactly um, uh, I don't know I, I grew up a Catholic but I'm like lapsed now you know go to church yeah, it's yeah. been like 19 years and I go there so Sunday is the only time where I get to go out mm-hmm. and that's where I always say to myself it's like nature is my church and, yeah. uh, and as long as you're not doing anything or like doing stupid things or whatever mm-hmm. like, as long as you're going there you respect of the nature and you just sitting there and admiring it yeah. nothing's gonna go wrong yeah. because uh, so far I've gone on so many trips and uh, it's always been great because whenever you reach there you just take a moment to like soothe it in and you're like wow I'm so thankful for this yeah. you know? 
and uh, this time for you just I'm just talking maybe may look like a man like you know, like you feel like nature, right? yeah. yeah you know like you know thank you for all this like it's yeah. this looks this is amazing and uh, I hope uh, we make all of this in one piece and stuff like that you know <laughs> some some kind of like yeah because actually like if you look at many of the tribes in the Amazon they really mm-hmm. have that sense of mm-hmm. you know like reverence to yeah, the yeah, nature yeah, yeah. because they they get food from that they get medicine mm-hmm. from that mm-hmm. so I totally understand that man yeah, yeah. and and you realize how small and tiny and incapable you are <laughs> yeah. the size of mother nature true true we think we think we conquered things but it's not it's not uh, um, I've been like to these uh, places where there's like huge huge cliffs and this and that and then I sometimes take a picture and then I'm like no it's like when I zoom it's like so sometimes what I do is I go to the other side and take a picture from here and then I zoom in and like whoa where are you guys and like ah oh, there like <laughs> man like, like then you realize yeah it's like we're so insignificant yeah. in a way you know it's like can you actually play a game right? you're so small right yeah. am I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so um and and another thing is uh i like to go to all these places and also tell the because um uh growing up in this way you tend to also get attached to the whole biodiversity side of things the whole, mm. you know and, and 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 this whole hunting thing is still tribal True thing mm-hmm. that we do, and a lot of still, uh, villages still do that, mm-hmm. and especially bird hunting. You know, yeah, it's yeah. it's uh, uh, it's sad. It's not to be done. I mean, uh, but you can't blame them because it's if I grew up there, I, I would know it was wrong because yeah, yeah. I was doing it. Mm-hmm. And you can't say, yeah, like these these people are so like, yeah, this is bad. Like, yeah. They're just killing birds. Just because you are educated, you can't blame them saying that they're bad. Yeah, true. You have to put yourself in their shoes, shoes perspective. Yeah, yeah. So I go there and we talk to them and then we're like, no, you know, you shouldn't be doing this because see, this bird may be going out to get food for the chick and then, you know, the next thing you know, the chick like waiting for the mom and then she never comes back. Yeah, yeah. And even she dies. And, and if you put yourself in that perspective, it's like, you know, you're, when you're there waiting mm-hmm. for you parent to go and then the next thing you know so we try to talk like that and they get oh yeah we understand and so you always do that like yeah. at the same time um, you know tell talk to them about all these things and yeah, true, uh, true. it's not on the fancy way where you have a presentation <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's not going to teach them yeah. because they don't so you just have to sit with them over a fire, over a fire yeah. or some whiskey and stuff <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And that's, yeah. that's, it stays. Yeah. It stays. And next time you go there, and uh-huh. they, you know, they're like, oh, it's, it's such a nice vibe because uh, they, because again, that personal touch. Comes yeah. Through. The so, oral yeah. stories is one of the things that really has touched many lives, man. I mean, like, we as Kasis, we are most, more or less related to that. And I sit by a fire and share stories. Mm-hmm. Thing that has and there's stories. such nice stories that they have. Mm. And, 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 and I really want to really now go back and actually have a pen, paper, and write down and document all this. Yeah. I think Which I never did back in the day. Researchers are always doing that more or mm-hmm. less. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but the thing is, what have you noticed is if you go there as a researcher and you tell them we're doing this, True that. it doesn't come out. Mm-hmm. I mean, it may come out to a certain extent, but not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the best way is actually like to go there as a like, normal person. As normal you. person. Yeah. Maybe if you have a voice recorder. Or stuff yeah, like yeah. I um, think uh, there is a technique we actually like pretend to be part of them. But I think tribals are getting at some bullshit like from far away. Like, this guy is totally different. Yeah, something with them. They're not that stupid. They can always they can yeah, you, you, if, you, if you go with that intention and purely with that, yeah, you, they'll find out. They'll find. But as long as you you're going with a uh, whole intention of like yeah, traveling, going there, seeing the place, and the whole, go with the flow basically. You know? That's where everything comes to life when mm. you realize everything. You know? So yeah, I think we have really digested a lot of content today, man. I feel so. Yeah, let's let's last. I want just want to talk about just one thing. You have really good sense of style, man. I gotta say that. <laughs> I mean, I have met a lot of people, mm-hmm. but I feel like you really like when I look at you, you look like those really skaters kind of people. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, are you into like shoes or into like you know like um, you into hats? Yes, I, yes, I am into hats. I apparently I don't have one today. <laughs> Um, I like I like to collect a lot of hats, and uh, if you see my hair will always be long throughout the year. Like you trim one. Yeah, I trim it. I trim it to a certain 
you know length okay. because I like I I stuck to that look. Honestly, it's all because like again going back to when I was a kid, I have to go get a haircut with my mom. <laughs> She's sitting there and I have the worst haircut. So like boom, like literally like so that. You know, like it's not like okay, pull, pull haircuts. Yeah, it's everything's the same size. It's like zero and here's also zero. I get laughed at at school and all that. And uh, as soon as I got a chance to actually. Shaved on my head, like I'm gonna leave it long because yeah. my whole childhood they they never grow more than like what one inch, mm-hmm. and um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So obviously, and you see, you grow up watching to a lot of these dudes, and they're always like their yeah hats and the hairs are like that, mm. wearing a flannel, and yeah, you know. So you get I don't know. It's like again, they like follow the crowd, sort yeah. of, but it's a very niche crowd that yeah, you follow, and you see it all around. Yeah, and uh, and it's just become like. Just like that. When I go, it's like I need a flannel. I'm like mm. da, da, da. okay, got one. I don't think of buying anything else, okay. you know. And even pants, I'm like ah, I need to get a pant. Like it's just it's, when I go shopping, it's like the first shop that I go, it's like I find it right there mm-hmm. because I'm uh, very lazy when I walk up to others. Yeah, yeah. I need a black pant. You know, black pant. Okay. Yeah. No brand, um, nothing, but just nah, like go nah, for nah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, sense of style came from all the influence from all the. So I so grew up watching a lot of motocross, a lot of BMX. Mm-hmm. So first, all of them had a very similar look. They yeah. always have the hat and the long yeah. hair and uh, flannels and mm. uh, you know <laughs> things like that. So it's like yeah, like like you look cool. You look cool. It's not so common here also because you know, not people, not a lot of people do that. Yeah, and I in think a way you stuck to it and become like I think now your street style is kind of like kind of you be doing this, but mm-hmm. now it came out again. So oh, it's come like, out. Yeah. I have never looked most of that, but like. And you know, there's there's a look when sometimes you come here and like no, it doesn't suit. It doesn't suit. So yeah. this is kind of like okay, yeah, constant, yeah. constant consistency. Like this flannels. Yeah, we need, I remember you have caps as well. So, yeah. yeah, so it's always flannels. You'll never see me been doing flannels since college. Like I have like a shit lot of collections and like, <laughs> but it's like sometimes you like this one. Like it's, it's so nice to wear that you tend to wear this. It's it's like you have those pair of shoes that you like to wear so much that. You end up wearing the same pair of shoes yeah, over yeah, and over yeah. again, and your drawer is like full of clothes like this, but it's always top, and then you just take it, it's like top again, you take it, so you wear the same shit over and over again. Um, so yeah, it's, it's always been like that. Too. I think for you, for you, it's probably caps. For mm-hmm. me, it's like shoes, man. Shoes. I, 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 I like. If I have like a like a pair of Jordans flex again, mm-hmm. so I would like when once I'm done with that, I'll be like you know like Watch coming it. home is like you know oh damn there's like that so shoes yeah I did in between I would like to collect yeah nice band sh- shoes though. no they're, they're these are the ones you get in Glory's man cheap so yeah sure. it's not legit <laughs> so um uh I would I was a big fan of Eddie's oh, and we were with so yeah, yeah, yeah. we had this website called Bikin remember back in the day and you they did ship to India and I would order I had some pairs mm-hmm. and uh, it was until recently that they started putting a huge import duty on all these things okay. and you know, pay a lot so of, kind of shit lot of extra money for that okay. so I would, yeah I like to get these but then they, again they're all related to either skateboarding or motocross or mountain biking shoes you know um, but I've seen a lot of like you said the sneaker culture that yeah. uh, the Nike the you, you don't have the Jordan the Nike, uh, no, no you would look good man seriously <laughs> like a little bit of high talks here no problem with it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but the, the sneaker sneaker culture thing, I really see a lot of my friends like posting it like yeah, fresh stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, what is that? The latest? I don't know. I saw something. The 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 the, the, the one that really got my attention was this. What brand was that? Nike with the had a drip of blood or something. Blah, I don't feel. Don't tell me it's little Nas. The yeah, 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 yeah. Is it that one? Is that Apple guys? Blah. Yeah, little Nas. Yeah, the guy who is uh, he actually the Satan shoes or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Is this that? Yeah. So that was it. Whoa. <laughs> Damn. Like, reach the level where the shoes are satanic now. Well, like, the dude. And, and, and it's like next level shit. Like yeah. they have a drip of blood of some that of that guy or <laughs> some employee stuff. And I'm like, who thinks about all this? You know. And uh, I don't want him to go to there. But like, yeah, yeah. They are so out of the box. They're too out of the box, I would say. But collecting shoes is nice. Collecting anything is nice. Mm. Um, How many pairs of uh, caps do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six. About nine or ten. Wow. And these are like the rare ones that I get from, you know, friends. I, I don't know. No. <laughs> I buy them. Oh, okay. <laughs> They're usually the bike brand ones, and okay. I usually stick the legit ones. Oh, okay. You pay a lot of money for that also. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. So you, I like to wear them, and I like it when people notice it. It's like, oh, like yeah. 
So, um, but it's not something that I do because I want to show off. <laughs> it's it's something that you like. Yeah. yeah. Some people have things for watches. I've been doing the same watch for like like about ten, ten years now. now. <laughs> it's kind of like a very like. Uh, I think it's military. You know? mm, it's a outdoor typical watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah with the fancy things. Yeah, that. man. So I mean, coming to all of that, yeah, do what you love and like just stick to it. Stick to it. Yeah. Just be original. They see like your style has been wearing in this. Mm-hmm. Now it's like street style is now out. You see these people wearing like baggy pants and baggy. Ah, it's coming back. Yeah. yeah, it's coming back. The tights are gone. Mm-hmm. So it's like history repeats itself always. So, Fashion yeah, always comes yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. And now like you see these old school guys. I mean the old school trend like you know if you see like key blinders and all those guys. Okay. There's a show called Key mm-hmm. Blinders in Netflix where you know they wear these like golfer caps and mm-hmm. all that suits and now everybody's doing that. Everybody's doing that. I saw in between they had a lot of the whole. K-pop culture thing. Also. Oh man, and that's uh, taking the world by storm, dude. Seriously. Yeah, yeah. So it's good as long as you're not trying too hard. Some of them trying too Oof. hard. Okay. But just yeah, yeah, just that's true. <laughs> do it. Yeah, like, just, just do it. If you're yeah. okay with it, yeah. drop the cool yeah, man. Yeah. I see some guys like if you're tall and all, fine, they look good. But some of them like fish. All respect to the all short guys out there. <laughs> I'm not too tall as well. But yeah, anyway, but he looks so out of place. Because, like, yeah, yeah, you do look out of place because that's the thing where we because I stuck to this because it doesn't look out of place. That's yeah. one, that's the first thing. True, true. Uh, don't try too hard. Huh? Don't, no, try, don't try too hard. Yeah, don't try too hard. And then that's I don't right. want to change anything also because yeah. again you might look out of place. Yeah. That's so right. fashion, yes, yeah, Shillong again, man. Oh, fashion is top notch, man. Top yeah. notch here. And, and and I like to see that again coming back to the whole bike thing where I don't like I said I don't want to call it a trend mm-hmm. because it's something that you have it for a while and yeah. it just disappears. Good, yeah. Again, I would want it to be consistent. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about um, people taking it from say like we said it evolves from a childhood spot to now um, uh, a healthy lifestyle that lifestyle. people want That's to good. have in their lives yeah, yeah. to be healthy. From there, maybe we can go further to. I mean, it's a transport. I mean, look yeah. at the traffic match. It's <laughs> too much. It's too, it's much. too much. And literally, like, uh, and there's some people that are traveling just from maybe here mm-hmm. to Lashmir, which is just a walk away or just pedal down and taking the car and getting stuck there and just creating even more congestion and stuff. Yeah, um, you saw the, the writing outside our shop, right? There's a graffiti right outside our shop. You didn't notice that? The, 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 on, the, 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 on the wall? I, I haven't read it. Please so, don't mind. Yeah, if you pass by from there, yeah, just yeah. just have a read. It says, okay. "You are not stuck in traffic. You are traffic. Mm-hmm. Get a bike." You know, true, true, true. So um, that's where we want to take it to as means of transport and health as and health as well. Mm-hmm. And and from there, you know, like um, it's because uh, speaking of, again of environmental aspects, where uh, there are things that you do and it's not about you make, being being proud of, about it anymore. It's because you have to do because, um, I mean, the the world is changing at a fast pace and everything. So mm-hmm. we can see right away the, all the the, the 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 consequences of the all the things that we did in the past and mm-hmm. uh, the global warming thing yeah, and all that. It's right true. in front of our eyes, but mm-hmm. we don't want to because obviously it's you know. So um, you could see uh, you can see you know people taking steps and planting trees and all that. But yeah. it's more than just you planting a tree only on environment day or on a program where like you're proud of, oh, I just planted a tree. <laughs> it, sh- it has to go from there to like, no, I have to plant a tree. Yeah. It's, it's high time. Yeah. And it's not about being proud of it. Same thing with the bikes, like me riding a bike, oh, it's good for the environment uh-huh. and um, it's good for my health. Uh-huh. Uh, from there to like, no, I have to ride a bike because my car emits too much carbon and stuff like that yeah. and sure. taking too much space um, you can go from that too and I always felt like even schools can start encouraging you know kids stay in your bike just take the bike yeah, it's, 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 it's a cool thing it's also cool thing. it's a cool thing it's, it's like, an in thing now it's an in thing, it's an in thing. And, and, and we can have um, a lot of people talk about bike lanes but I'm not really into that yet because it's still we still have small roads and having a yeah. bike lane is like I mean we, let's let's face it, we, you, you build a footpath and somebody sells veggies there now it's not a footpath so are we still not reached that point stage yet? So it's like, yeah. yeah. So no, not right away. It's like oh, we need to do second, we need to build back It's like no, it's not gonna happen right away. Small, small steps. It's small steps. Like I mean, yeah, it's like being you taking the bike and being noticed for like a traffic cop that stops traffic and then sees a cyclist and it's raining. 
and he's like, okay, that's a cyclist. Yeah. Maybe let him just pass because he's he's dressed in the rain. Yeah, and true, true. Let, at least just a cyclist pass. Yeah. Things like that, small things small that things. make us feel appreciate like appreciated uh, appreciate because, um, or maybe if you're in front of a car, mm-hmm. at least until the car gets a chance to overtake, yeah. you're not supposed to honk because yeah. it's so annoying. True, 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 true. It's so annoying when you be honked at. <laughs> These people are like, get out of the way, man! You're blocking the road and yeah. stuff like that. And, no, uh, that's not so. Things like that where you you could probably like be paid nice for honking your mm-hmm. just like that'd be great because that'd be well appreciated. Yeah, so respect, respect. small things, yeah. small small things, and I've, yeah, like like I said, always a firm believer in like creating the balance yeah. because if you do something that's of a big magnitude, mm-hmm. it affects the whole balance and like you know, whole system is yeah, true, true. You know, it's, it's spoiled so yeah. you, you need to th- think slower at time without also considering the other things it's not just it for the interest of yes. a particular group or a particular yes. thing okay. so yeah eventually like it'll take time but uh, I do believe we'll get there and uh, one day at a time yeah one day at a time and I hope uh, people watch this podcast and actually uh, have sense of appreciation <laughs> <laughs> yeah for you doing this yeah. Um, for a lot of things that we said even though it might not be some I, I don't know if it's against I won't say it's against but like some people maybe because we're talking about a lot of things that I mean sometimes uh, small issues turn very sensitive nowadays yeah, true, true, you're true. talking about it because you, we're just saying talking yeah. like this but then it's like oh, wait, what did she say yeah, exactly. so no it's not like that we're just talking because this, my perspective is your perspective yeah, exactly. we just got together mm-hmm, having mm-hmm. a good time having coffee and we have a podcast yeah, now exactly Enjoy it, you know. It's, Enjoy it's, it. And this is your first, I think this is your first. No, no, no. First on YouTube, mm-hmm. but it'll be, uh, I think we started a long time ago. I mean, I started a long time ago until I met James. And okay. So, and all that. so uh-huh. it's been a journey, been a journey. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So After a while, right? Like you're having a guest. It's, 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 it's an honor to be here. And yeah, no problem, man. Uh, thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we have like... We can go on and on, man. I, I think you can go oh, on and on. No, no. But the cameras cannot get taken anymore. Yeah, <laughs> so anyway, how long has it been? Yeah, one. Uh, it's been I think two hours. Oh, right. great. Like that. So enough content for today. So yeah, guys. So we'll leave it to it, and I want to say a uh, big shout out, especially to Yaiman who's recommended me to you. Okay, Yaiman. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, I, yeah, yeah. I know he's going to be watching this. Yeah. Great, he's a nice guy. He good guy yeah, yeah. So big shout out to him and I want to say thank you to everyone who was watching this and yeah definitely um, do go to his shop if you want to cycle uh-huh. and to help and all that stuff so you know it's a great way to make your life more better I think and obviously you suffering so many things that you can avoid yeah. cycling so, so anyway good night guys and yeah until next time yeah stay safe and not just that drink a cup of coffee and just have good interaction with a friend that's what matters the most man so,